What's up, guys? We are back with a full slate of MLB action here on Friday, June 21st. Thursday was a very weird short slate, guys. Things did not go our way at all once again. We saw that no-run first inning in the Seattle-Cleveland game. Go down the drain right off the bat with three runs there in the first inning. Absolutely wild stuff there. Not what you would expect in that game at all. The Twins, minus 120. They definitely had their chances in that game before eventually losing 7-6 to six in extra innings. So feeling pretty cursed here in these extra inning games. We did get that no-run first inning in the Royals-Oakland game correct. So that was nice. Put a little bit of a win on the board there for some healing. With the Yankees minus 135, we saw Luis Gill, one of the best starters in the MLB, have his worst start of the season by far. So huge disappointment there. He just looked terrible, and the Orioles just continue their uh, just like insanely good hitting. We also had the Brewers minus 108, and we ended up taking the loss in that one due to a ninth inning walk off there for the Padres. We, we had Yelich lose a ball in the lights in that game. Just another really weird spot. Could have gone either way, and it falls against us. So now what we're looking for, guys, let's see if we can get back on track here with a full Friday slate. Before we get into these games, do me a big favor and hit that like button. It's a great way to show some support for the channel and all the work we put in here every single day. If you're new, go ahead and subscribe. It's 100% free and can keep you from missing out on these picks. Our videos are sponsored by StumpTheSpread.com. Click the link in the description and go over there and join our free email list and check out our top confidence plays on all the majors sports. Comment below with all the bets you're looking at today, and we'll give you our best advice on all of them. We respond to absolutely every single comment, so let us know anything you want to say about my picks, these videos, or anything you see here. As always, our final picks will be in the pinned comment down below. Now let's get into our first game of the day. We've got the New York Mets going on the road to take on the Chicago Cubs. The Mets come into this game fresh off of a tough loss there to end their series against the Texas Rangers that snapped their long winning streak. They've been looking very, very good recently. They're up to 35 and 38 on the season, handing the ball in this game to Jose Quintana. He's 2-5 and five this year with a 4.98 ERA. He's coming off of a pretty good start there against San Diego Padres, guys. He went six innings, gave up two hits, only a single earned run. He struck out six and walked two in that start, so a huge bounce back from a game where he only lasted three and two-thirds innings against the Phillies. We do see that the Mets are three and are two and three over his last five starts, so that's not ideal, but he hasn't given up more than three earned runs over any of those starts, so pretty legitimate stuff coming out of Quintana right now. I mean, recently, I mean, maybe not recently, but this season he's definitely had some struggles, but it seems like he's kind of figured things out for the present. In general, guys, the Mets bullpen has not been amazing. Trending in a positive direction, though, a 4.13 bullpen ERA has them around 19th in the majors. So, you know, not a complete disaster, but not exactly a bullpen you can depend on. The hitters, the bats, that's really what's come alive for this winning streak to exist, guys. They scored 3, 7, 14, 11, and 5 runs over their last few games. That is very, very legit for a team that struggled at the mound uh, on the, at the plate, especially. I mean, things not that great at the plate for them over the course of the season, but numbers trending up, guys, for sure. I mean, they're up to 12th in the majors in runs scored. They're betting 246 as a team. That is a number that is very much pointed upwards. There's team slugging percentages doing well now, much, much better compared to what it was doing recently. We see Starling Marte hitting the ball. Pete Alonso put another home run on there. Like, Things are looking up for the Mets hitters, no doubt about it. And they're going up against Chicago Cubs team that's playing a little bit better themselves. I mean, they won 6-5 to five in Game 3 of their series against the Giants, 5-2 to two in Game 2. They won that series two games to one. They lost Game 1, 7-6. to six. So a pretty competitive series there for the Cubs. They're 36-39 and 39 this season, handing the ball to their ace, Shota Imanaga. He is 7-1 and one this year with a 1.89 ERA. He's coming off a great start there against the Cardinals. He went seven innings, gave up four hits, only a single earned run. He struck out six in that game. So just very, very positive stuff from him. Seems like he's back on track after a little bit of a struggle there in starts against the uh, the Brewers and the Chicago White Sox. So, seems like Emanaga, we can expect a very, very good lights out stuff from him once again. No big shocker. That guy has been amazing all season long. The Cubs' bullpen is actually headed in something of a positive direction. They're slightly above average in the majors with a 3.86 bullpen ERA, so nothing wrong with that bullpen either. I mean, things looking pretty positive for the Cubs right now in general, despite the fact that their bats, I mean, they've been fine, but not, you know, not amazing and they definitely haven't been amazing over the course of the season, guys. I mean, they scored six, five, and six runs, respectively, in their series against the Giants, but their series against the Cardinals wasn't nearly as good, so not exactly a bunch of hitters that we can trust on this roster. This team is 17th in the majors in runs scored, 22nd in the majors in slugging percentage. They're batting only 230 as a team overall. None of those numbers really have me thinking that this is like an amazing offensive team, but 
they're swinging the bats a little bit better in their last series, so we'll give them some credit. Looking at the numbers for this game, guys, we see the Mets at plus 136. We see the Cubs at minus 150. We've got an over-under of 8.5 in this game. We uh, we see the Mets, they're not a terrible road team, guys. 16-15 and 15 on the road is not a disaster. The Cubs are 21-16 and 16 at home, so that's pretty good. This has definitely been a much, much better team when they're playing at Wrigley Field this season. In terms of the over-under, we see that the Cubs are a pretty big under team. The Mets are a slight over team. And an over-under of 8.5 in this one doesn't really uh, doesn't really get me too excited. So I'm not too interested in the over-under. I do think this could be a possible no-run first inning game. I think it's actually probably a pretty good no-run first inning game. So keep an eye on that. See if a no-run first inning bet ends up in the pinned comment for this one. But I'm also looking at the Cubs minus 150 here with Imanaga out there on the mound. And the Cubs playing relatively well right now. It seems like a reasonable spot. I don't think we should be too scared of the Mets bats, even though they've looked better recently. I mean, this isn't a team loaded with sluggers. I don't think they're going to have a heyday here against one of the best pitchers in the major league. So give me the Cubs minus 150 and give me a look there at a no run first inning in this game. Next up, guys, we got the Arizona Diamondbacks going on the road to take on the Philadelphia Phillies. We see the Diamondbacks come into this game fresh off of winning a series there against the Washington Nationals. They won that series two games to one. They won game three of that series five to two. They're 37 and 38 on the year, so clawing their way back to 500. They're still way behind the Dodgers there in the NL West, but at around 500, this team definitely has to feel pretty good about themselves. They're handing the ball to Jordan Montgomery, who's five and four this year with a 6.00 ERA. He's coming off of a very good outing there against the White Sox. It was against the White Sox. We're not exactly going to throw him a parade, but he went five innings. He had four hits, only a single run, and it was unearned. His starts before that, maybe not the highest caliber, guys. I mean, he gave six hits and three earned runs to the Angels. He gave up seven hits and six earned runs to the Giants and only two innings there. He didn't have a very good time against the Mets either back on the 31st, so he's definitely had his problems. Maybe he's rounding into form here a little bit, but not exactly a starter that I'm super high on. Uh, yeah, not a starter that I'm super high on really at all, guys, and also not very high on that Arizona Diamondbacks bullpen guys it's been one of the worst bullpens in the major leagues all season long so big question marks for whenever Jordan Montgomery comes out of this game and yeah not exactly a team you want to have question marks against going up against the Phillies so that's a pretty big concern the Diamondbacks bats not really a huge concern though guys they've been putting up some runs maybe not in this series against Washington I mean they scored five one and five runs respectively that's pretty nice they did put up tons of offense against the White Sox but it's the White Sox so we're not exactly gonna freak out about that I mean, in general, this team's been very good at the plate this year. Sixth in the majors in runs scored. Seventh in the majors in batting average. Like, they are a top 10 slugging percentage team as well. Getting on base at a 323 clip. Like, this team, no slouches at the plate. Very, very good offensively. But they're going to need to be good offensively going up against the Phillies who come into this game fresh off of a tough loss there to San Diego. They lost game three that series 5-2. to two, But they are 49-25 and 25 on the season. And they probably don't feel terrible handing the ball to Tijuan Walker. I mean, he is 3-2 and two this year with a 5.33 ERA. But he's coming off of, I would say, back-to-back -back solid starts against the Orioles in a game the Phillies did lose. He went 5-2 and two thirds innings, gave up three earned runs on six hits. Like, that's a pretty solid outing, honestly going up against a team like Baltimore. His start before that going up against a pretty hot Mets team. He went five and two thirds innings, gave up only two hits and two earned runs in that one. So over his last couple starts, he's looked pretty solid out there. Not a lot of complaints for me about him. And the Phillies bullpen is tied right now for first place in the major leagues with the Orioles with a 3.13 bullpen ERA. So we can definitely feel very, very good about the Phillies bullpen whenever we see Walker eventually come out of the game. So not a lot of problems for me there. The Phillies offense isn't necessarily swinging the hottest bats ever. I mean, they've scored two, four, and nine runs respectively over their last three games. They're definitely missing Real Muto. Uh, I mean, losing your starting catcher and one of your, you know, I'm not going to say necessarily better hitters, but a very, very solid hitter for sure is not a good thing, but it seems like they're kind of picking up the pieces here, figuring out what they're going to have to do moving forward. I mean, you got Bryce Harper out there. Like this is a very, very good hitting team. Fourth in the majors and runs scored fourth in the majors batting 256 as a team. They're one of the best slugging percentage teams in the majors. Like this is a squad that can hit the ball with anybody out there. So I'm expecting them to definitely put up some runs in this game. And look at the numbers for this one, guys. We see that the odds makers definitely have some questions about the Phillies in this game. We've got the Phillies at only minus 134. We've got an over under of nine and a half in this game. If you wanted to take the Diamondbacks, you can get them at plus 120. We see the Phillies are 29 and 10 at home this year, guys. That is an MLB best mark at home this season. The Diamondbacks are only 18 and 20 on the road, which, you know, 
not a disaster, but not great. Bull teams are showing very slight trends towards the under. I'm not going to lie, guys. I'm not interested in the over-under in this game. It's 9.5. Just not interested in it. Definitely very interested in the Phillies minus 134, guys. Give me the Phillies in this game. I think Tijuan Walker does enough to keep them in the game. And even if Jordan Montgomery has one of his random good starts, I think we could definitely see the Phillies beat up on that bullpen in the last four-ish innings of the game at least. So give me the Phillies minus 134. I think this is an excellent spot for them. Next up, guys, we get the Chicago White Sox. They're going on the road to take on the Detroit Tigers. The White Sox come to this game fresh off of losing two in a row to the Houston Astros. They lost that series two games to one. I guess they're probably pretty pumped to just salvage that one win there. But at 20 and 56 on the year, not a lot of positives. They're handing the ball to one of their very few positives, though. Eric Feedy, who is 5 and 5-1 this season with a 3.09 ERA. Man, you've got to be absolutely lights out to be trying to get wins for the Chicago White Sox. And man, he's been doing it, guys. His last time out against the Arizona Diamondbacks, a pretty hard-hitting team. He looked very good out there. He went six innings, gave up two earned runs, and struck out six. So nothing wrong with that appearance. He has uh, he had a, a little bit of a hiccup there at Milwaukee. He did give up three earned runs at Chicago, but his last two starts have been very, very good. No problem for me there. And they've both been on the road just like this start is going to be. So we're not too scared about him going on the road to take on the Tigers. He has not faced the Tigers since back on the 31st of March. And he, I mean, he had a relatively good time in that game. It's so long ago, though. I don't think there's really anything to glean from that information. The White Sox bullpen, obviously uh, one of the worst of the majors. A 4.82 bullpen ERA is pretty much a disaster. And still, guys, not as much of a disaster as this offense. Worst offense in the majors. No, no doubt about it. In their series against Houston, they scored three, one, and two runs, respectively. Just a terrible, terrible offense. Nobody on that offense that I'm afraid of. They're dead last in all the major statistical categories. So, yeah, just going to go ahead and keep saying this offense sucks and go ahead and move on they're taking on the Detroit Tigers who just got swept by the Atlanta Braves they've actually lost four straight games so things not pointed the right direction for them they're 34 and 40 this season they're handing the ball to Jack Flaherty who's four and four this year with a 3.01 ERA he's coming off of a pretty solid start there at Houston he went five innings gave up three hits and no runs in that outing he struck out six and walked one in that game he actually has not given up an earned run over any of his last three starts very very solid stuff he's looking great out there it took him a little bit to get on track this season but man now that he's on track he is absolutely killing it so looking at the Tigers bullpen how are they going to do once Flaherty comes out of the game well guys in general the Tigers have been an above average bullpen this season I mean a 3.86 bullpen ERA nothing wrong with that definitely take that I mean above average is above average and the the offense is what's really fallen off a cliff here and has caused them to go on this losing streak guys they've scored 0 1 1 and 1 run respectively over their last four games absolutely just disaster out there not having a very good time at the plate they're down to 20th in the majors in runs scored they're 24th in the majors batting only 230 as a team they're 27th in the majors and on base percentage getting on base at a 297 clip like that's that's borderline embarrassing stuff guys this offense is gonna have to find it at some point when is that gonna happen i don't know finding it against feedy and the white Sox. i mean maybe against the white Sox bullpen but not against feedy so definitely some question marks here looking at the numbers for this game guys we see the white Sox at plus 152 the tigers at minus 160 65. We've got an over under of seven and a half in this game. I think this is a very, very reasonable spot to look at a no run first inning bet. Neither one of these offenses are very good. Both starting pitchers are killing it right now. I expect no runs in the first inning. So that has a definite chance to end up in the pin comment. In terms of a side in this game, honestly, I think you could take a flyer on the White Sox plus 152. I don't love the Tigers minus 165. That seems a bit uh, a bit steep, but the White Sox are only seven and 31 on the road. So this is not not a, not a bet on the side that I'm going to encourage you to take, but I do think no run first inning has some very solid value and a good chance to end up in the pinned comment. Next on the docket, guys, we're just going to briefly touch on the Tampa Bay Rays taking on the Pittsburgh Pirates. We have no, uh, com- we only have one confirmed starter for this game and no numbers posted yet. We see the Rays got the 7-6 to win in extra innings there over the Twins in the last game of that series. They're up to 36-39 and in the year. They're handing the ball in this game to Ryan Pepio, who he's 4-4 four four this season with a 4.57 ERA coming off a pretty bad start there against the Atlanta Braves. I mean, he gave up five earned runs on six hits. He gave up three home runs in that outing. Like, he's just not having that great of a time right now. And, I mean, the Tampa Bay Rays in general not having the best time, although they have won three out of their last four games in general. So maybe they're, you know, maybe once again it looks like this team is turning it around. We'll see what we actually get out of them. Not the hottest hitting team, although they are swinging the bats a little bit better recently. They're taking on a Pirates team that, you know, has also won three out of their last four. They're up to 36 and 38 on the season. We don't know who they're going to be, uh, you know, given the start to in this game. So we can't, you know, go dive too deep into this game. I mean, the Pirates have been hitting the ball slightly better lately. I mean, they scored one 
one and four runs over their last three games. So, you know, take that for what you will when you're only scoring like that against Cincinnati Reds. Maybe the bats not looking too hot, but they did look hot in the series before this against the Colorado Rockies. So we'll see where we are on this game once the you know numbers come out and we get a confirmed starter for the Pirates. So keep an eye on that pinned comment. See if this one gets added in at some point. Next on the docket, guys, we've got a very exciting series starting off here between the Atlanta Braves and the New York Yankees. The Braves come into this game fresh off of a three-game sweep there of the Tigers. They are 41-31 and 31 on the season, and they're handing the ball in this game to Chris Sale, who's 9-2 and two this year with a 2.98 ERA. He's been back on track each of his last two starts. They were both seven-inning starts. He gave up five hits and two earned runs in each of them. He struck out 10 against the Nationals and seven against the Tampa Bay Rays. He's, he's looked very, very good. He bounced back well from that weird, weird, weird start he had back on the first of this month against the Oakland A's. Seems like he's ready to go, though, back on track now and throwing the ball really well. The Atlanta bullpen in general, guys, has been top 10 in the majors pretty much all season long. A 3.59 bullpen ERA is nothing to turn your nose about. This is a very, very good bullpen, and this offense seems like they're kind of figuring things out a little bit, maybe? I mean, they've scored seven, two, and two runs in their series against the Tigers. They have won six of their last seven games, so clearly not swinging the coldest bats. They're 15th in the majors in runs scored, though. Eight in the majors in slugging percentage, so that's something nice, but 17th in the majors and on base percentage is not amazing, so we have some small question marks about this offense, but in general, I'm not too worried about them. They're going up against the New York Yankees, who Man, they're having a rough time, guys. They've lost four out of their last five games. We just saw Luis Gill get absolutely torched. We saw Judge come back and hit a home run, but that did not help at all. The, the Orioles went absolutely just bonkers in that game. So pretty wild stuff there. The Yankees are 51-26 and 26 on the season. You're going to have your bumps in the road in such a long MLB season. They're hitting the ball in this game to a guy coming off a big bump in the road, guys. Carlos Rodon, he's 9-3 and three this year with a 3.28 ERA after getting just shelled at Boston, guys. Over five innings, he gave up seven hits and five earned runs. He struck out seven and walked three in that outing. Didn't seem like he had his best stuff. He just got, and he got got in that game. Like, there's no way around it. They hit him very hard in that one. So we're a little bit concerned about how he's throwing the ball. Maybe he could bounce back here, but something that's not been bouncing back recently has been the Yankees' bullpen. They're up to a 3.18 bullpen ERA, no longer in the top spot in the majors and not trending in a positive direction. I mean, you just gave up freaking 17 runs in one game. They've given up 17, 7, and 2 runs, respectively, over their last three. That was all against Baltimore. And then against Boston, they gave up 9, 8, and 1 run. Like, just not, not the bullpen that we were looking at earlier in the season. So some concerns there for sure. The Yankees bats, I mean, we did see Judge come back. Looks like that hand's okay. Looks like he's ready to get back after it. But, I mean, five runs in a 17-5 to five blowout, not great. Six runs in a game, he lost 7-6. to six. I guess that one's not really on the hitters. But in general, guys, things are looking a little bit rough for the Yankees. I mean, they are still first in the majors in run scored and second in the majors on base percentage. So we're not too worried about that. But they are about to go up against one of the toughest pitchers in the majors. So definitely some concerns in this game for me. Looking at the numbers for this game, we see the Braves at minus 115, the Yankees at plus 102. We've got an over-under of eight in this game. Oh, guys, in general, this feels like a very, very tough spot to me. To be honest, I lean towards the Braves minus 115. I also think this could be a pretty pretty solid no run first inning spot despite this being two relatively decent offenses I mean obviously the Yankees are an elite offense and the Braves are a decent offense but you've got two very good starters going up against each other uh, assuming that Radon gets back on the horse and is throwing the ball well so we'll see what we get maybe this could be a no run first inning spot I side slightly towards the Braves assuming this Yankee skid is going to continue but it has to stop at some point honestly guys not too interested in the side in this one I'll, I'll be I'll be taking this one as a no run first inning play or nothing at this point. Just do not know what to expect. Do not know what to see, we're going to see from the Yankees. Next on the docket, guys, we're looking at the Boston Red Sox going on the road to take on the Cincinnati Reds. The Red Sox come to this game winners of their last five in a row. They just finished off a sweep at Toronto. They won all three games in that series. They won seven to three, four to three, and then seven to three again. They are forty and thirty five on the year, headed in the right direction for sure. They're handing the ball to Cutter Crawford, who's three and six this season with a three point five four ERA. He's coming off one of his best outings of the year, guys. He looked pretty serviceable there against the Yankees. He went six innings, gave up three hits and three earned runs. He did give up two home runs in that game, which to the Yankees, not exactly the end of the world, but he struck out nine and walked one. He's looked pretty decent over, I would say, I guess his last two starts. He's going up against an absolute murderer's row, guys. Five of the toughest teams you would want to face. I mean, he went up, he faced Milwaukee, Baltimore, Atlanta, Philly, and the Yankees over his last five starts. So pretty much a murderer's row. It's got to feel a lot better to be get to go up against 
the Cincinnati Reds. Might not feel great to go up against the Reds at the Great American Ballpark, but in general, guys, we can feel, uh, I would say, decent to great about the Boston bullpen. They're now fifth in the majors with a 3.45 bullpen ERA, so that's for sure headed in the right direction, despite having faced some pretty tough teams lately, and the bats are awake, guys. They've scored seven, four, three, nine, and eight runs, respectively, over their last five games. That will definitely work, especially for a team that's had its struggles at the plate this season. They are now up to ninth in the majors in runs scored, fifth in the majors batting 254 as a team. Like, this squad absolutely killing the ball at the plate right now. Like, things are looking up, no doubt about it. Boston Red Sox fans have to be pretty pumped right now. They're taking on the Cincinnati Reds, who they're having a hard time. They've lost four of their last five games. They just lost two out of three to the Pirates in a game in a series we saw very, very little offense. The Reds are 35 and 39 on the year, handing the ball to Andrew Abbott, who's five and six this season with a 3.42 ERA. He's coming off of a uh, uh, decent, I guess, start against the Milwaukee Brewers. I mean, he went five innings, gave up four hits and three earned runs. His start before that against the Cubs was a but he had some problems at Colorado before that, and he got shelled back on the 28th of last month by the St. Louis Cardinals. Some some question marks for me about Abbott. I mean, definitely some question marks. And he's facing a very good hitting team in a very small ballpark. So definitely question marks there. The Reds' bullpen's been better than you would expect. A 3.80 bullpen ERA, absolutely nothing wrong with that. The hitting has been what sunk this team over the course of the season. And lately, guys, they've scored 0, 2, 1, and 4 runs, respectively, over their last few games. Not having a good time at the plate. 19th in the majors in run scored. 27th in the majors, batting 225 as a team. That's just not going to get the job done, guys. Those are pretty freaking pedestrian numbers. Not 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 what not you need from a major league offense. It's not going to get the job done. This bullpen, this pitching staff, they're not terrible, but they're not good enough to prop up that bad of an offense. So looking at the numbers for this game, guys, it almost feels like a trap to me. We see the Red Sox at minus 105. We see the Reds at minus 108. We've got an over-under of nine in this game. Boston is 22 and 15 on the road. They've been a very respectable road team all all season long, so we can feel good about that. The Reds are 18 and 19 at home, so not amazing. We do see both teams showing trends towards the under, and we've got an over-under of nine. Am I really trying to play an under in the Great American Ballpark? I do not think so, but I definitely like the Boston Red Sox minus 105. It just seems like too good of a price. Maybe this is a trap game, but I surely think that Boston can come through in this one and get us a win. They've been playing really, really well lately, and that is not something we can say about the Cincinnati Reds. Moving right along here, guys, we've got the Seattle Mariners going on the road to take on the Miami Marlins. The Mariners come into this game for Fresh off of back-to-back -back losses, they're now 44 and 33 on the season. Not, you know, I mean, they're they're charging ahead there in the AL West, no doubt about it. But those last couple games could not have left a good taste in their mouth. They're handing the ball in this one to George Kirby, who's six and five this year with a 3.54 ERA. He's coming off of back-to-back -back very, very solid starts. You could honestly say his last four starts in a row have all been very, very good. And two of them were at home, and two of them were on the road. Be home and away splits for the Mariners have been a little bit tough. But his last time out against the Rangers, he went six innings, gave up one run. It wasn't even an earned run. Start for that at Kansas City. He looked great going seven innings, giving up five hits and a single earned run. So he's throwing the ball very, very well right now. No doubt about that. And no surprise, guys, the Mariners bullpen is also very, very good. A 3.53 bullpen ERA is fantastic. Easily top 10. Definitely a bullpen that could end up pushing against the top five in the majors. So we'll see how they can do there. The problem for this team is always how many runs or are they going to score any runs at all? They scored three, zero, and eight runs in their series against Cleveland. Shocker the year they won the game they scored eight and lost all the other ones this this team just not great at the plate guys definitely bottom third of the majors they're 29th in the major leagues in team batting average guys they're only batting 220 Eesh, not good stuff they are 24th in the majors in slugging percentage. They are 25th in the majors with a 300 on base percentage. Like, this is just not a team that hits the ball particularly well. Going to be a problem for them uh, seemingly all season long unless they make some big crazy moves, which, I mean, who knows? They are leading in the uh, in the AL West there, so maybe now is the time to be a buyer. We will have to see, but they're going up against the Miami Marlins in this game. The Marlins, who just won two out of three against the Cardinals. Pretty wild stuff there from the Cardinals. Very, very disappointing performances from them. The Marlins are now 25 and 49 on the year, handing the ball to Trevor Rogers, who's 1 and 8 this season with a 5.09 ERA. He's coming off a pretty good start there against Washington, though. It was at Washington. He went seven innings. He had six hits and two earned runs. He gave up a home run in that game, so that's not amazing. But the start before that against Cleveland, he gave up only a single earned run over five innings. Start before that against Texas, he had some trouble, but he did have a decent start at the Padres back on the 27th of last month. So he's a guy that can put up some decent, uh, you know, throw some decent pitches, put up some okay numbers there for a little bit. So, you know, maybe going up against a weak offense like the Mariners will be the medicine for him to have another positive outing. The Marlins bullpen guys, pretty bottom of the barrel, clearly a bottom five bullpen in the majors. So definitely big question marks about, uh, you know, what they can do out there once Trevor Rogers comes out of the game. And this offense, while they did score four, nine, and six runs, 
runs respectively in their series against the Cardinals. Not one of the best in the majors, honestly one of the worst. They're second to last in runs scored, second to last in on base percentage, getting on base at a 284 clip, and they're also second to last in slugging percentage. Not running any scary hitters up there. I mean, they are swinging some, I'm not going to say super hot bats, given it was against the Cardinals and how all that went down, but you know, they're swinging the bats okay right now. They're about to go up against a very tough pitching team though, so we'll see if that can continue for them. Looking at the numbers for this game, we see the Mariners at minus 157, the Marlins at plus 138. We've got an over-under in this game of 7 and a half the Mariners are only 17 and 21 on the road we see Miami is only 14 and 26 at home though so that's obviously not a great look in general in this game guys I'm leaning towards the Mariners minus 157 I do think there's some chance you could look at a no run first inning in this game possibly but we're going to be leaning towards the Mariners despite the fact they're on the road I think we're going to see some letdown performances from the Marlins at home here they're playing a Seattle team that is actually a good team the Marlins are not the Cardinals the team they just played before really not that great either so give me the Mariners minus 157 in this game it's got a definite shot to end up in the pin comment next up guys we're just going to briefly touch on the Toronto Blue Jays going on the road to take on the Cleveland Guardians we do not have a confirmed starter for the Blue Jays they're not having a great time lately they just lost three in a row against the Boston Red Sox they're 35 and 39 on the season Bats not looking crazy hot either. They scored three, three, and three runs respectively in their series against Boston. None of that was enough. So don't feel very good about this offense. Don't feel amazing about this pitching staff. We really don't have enough information to give an actual pick on this game. We don't even have any lines out for this one, but just wanted to briefly mention it. Uh, you know, looking at Cleveland for this game, they come into it playing pretty well. They just won two out of three against Seattle. They're 46 and 26 on the year, handing the ball on this one to Carlos Carrasco, who he's been, I mean, he's been serviceable this season, not exactly elite, which, I mean, what can you really expect from a 37 year old but you know he's been fine his last time out against the Toronto Blue Jays he didn't have a great time so that's a bit of a concern especially since that's who he's facing in this game he went five innings gave up six hits and five earned runs start for that at Miami though was very good we can't help but notice that Cleveland is only one in four over his last five starts so definitely some concerns there I mean the Cleveland bullpen has been pretty decent this year obviously I mean easily top 10 so that's nice to have them to back up that kind of mediocre starter and the bats have looked good they scored six eight and five runs in a series against Seattle, which is pretty impressive given how good of a pitching staff Seattle is in general. So don't know which way we're going to be leaning in this game as there's no numbers out yet and no confirmed starter for the Blue Jays. So you'll just have to check that pinned comment and see if they made their way into there later. Moving right along here, guys, we've got the Kansas City Royals going on the road to take on the Texas Rangers. The Royals come into this game fresh off of a narrow 3-2 win there to salvage one win in that series against the Oakland A's. Yeah, the Royals not looking like the same team on the road as they are at home. They're 42-34 and on the season overall, handing the ball in this game to Brady Singer, who's 4-4 four four this season with a 3.39 ERA. Coming off of back-to-back starts that left a little bit to be desired. I mean, in his defense, they were starts against the Yankees and the LA Dodgers, so two of the toughest teams to face in the majors. His start before those two at Cleveland wasn't amazing either, though, guys. He went, gave up nine hits and two earned runs over three and two-thirds. I mean, going at the Dodgers, pitching six innings, giving up five hits and three earned runs is not a disaster. All three of those runs were solo home runs, so clean up a couple of those mistakes, and then you've got a great outing on your hands. In general, guys, we don't feel as good as we felt early in the year against the Kansas City Royals bullpen. They're down to 12th in the majors with a 3.84 bullpen ERA, so not exactly amazing. Maybe not trending in the greatest direction, so we'll see what we get out of them. We'll also see what we get out of their bats, which have been slumping recently, and they scored three, one, and five runs there against the Oakland A's. In the last game of their series against the Dodgers, they got shut out. They lost that one three to nothing, so not swinging the hottest bats right now. I mean, Bobby Witt Jr. is a monster. He had a go-ahead home run in that game against the Oakland A's. So, you know, this team got some pieces on it, got some hitters. They're fifth in the majors in runs scored and 13th in the majors in on-base percentage. They are a top 10 slugging percentage team, so we'll see what we actually get out of them in this game. They're going up against the Rangers, who just managed to snap the Mets' winning streak. They won game three of that series 5-3, to three, but lost the series two games to one. They're only 34-40 and 30, 40 on the season, so not exactly where they want to be. They're handing the ball in this game to Nathan Ebialdi. He is 3-3 three and three with a 3.15 ERA. Coming off of a rough start there at Seattle, Seattle. He gave up four earned runs over three innings of work. One of his worst starts, guys, probably of the season, honestly. Like, he's been pretty consistent. He's had a pretty good year. Do we expect him to bounce back here going up against the Kansas City Royals? Well, he is at home, and the Royals are not as good at home, so he's definitely got a chance. In general, guys, the Rangers' bullpen, though, has definitely been uh, something of a problem. They've been one of the bottom five bullpens most of the season, I would say. I mean, just not having a very good time out there. Once the starters come out of the game for the Rangers, kind of all bad 
stats are off. Like you do not know what you're going to get from this bullpen. So yeah, definitely some concerns about that. And I mean, the Royals are a team that's had a lot of late game heroics. So if it's a close game down there at the end and you're running the Rangers bullpen out there to go up against the Royals hitters, definitely reason for concern. The Rangers hitters in general, guys, I mean, they're just kind of all over the place, to be honest. I mean, they scored five, six, two, zero, and five runs over their last five games. Over the course of the season, they've been below average now, but they were above average in the early going, so things have definitely cooled off. They're down to 18th in the majors and runs scored. They're only batting 236 as a team, so that's not great. Their team slugging percentage isn't amazing. They're getting a base at a 306 clip. Like, I don't have a ton of crazy positive things to say about the Rangers, even though they're playing at home. I mean, looking at the numbers for this game, guys, we see the Royals at plus 125, the Rangers at minus 142. So the odds makers are pretty big on EV Aldi right now. We've got an over under of eight in this game. The Royals, not as good on the road, guys. 17 and 20 on the road. That's my big concern. We do see both teams showing trends towards the under, and we've got two pretty decent starters out there on the mound. Does that equal an underplay for me on an over-under of eight? I guess maybe. You could also talk me into possibly a no-run first inning in this game. But in general, guys, I think we're going to see the Royals get back on track here. I think they're going to open up this series at the Rangers with a win at least most of the time. I mean, taking the Royals plus 125 feels like a pretty good spot to me. I think there's a very good chance if they don't get to the Rangers starter that they can get to that bullpen. And I'm expecting a pretty solid outing here from Singer. Rounding into the home stretch here, guys, we've got the Baltimore Orioles going on the road to take on the Houston Astros. The Orioles looked borderline, well, I mean, they looked unstoppable there in game three of their series against the Yankees, just destroying one of the best starters or a guy that has been one of the best starters so far this year. I mean, winning 17 to five there, pretty wild stuff. The Orioles are 49 and 25 this season, handing the ball in this one to Grayson Rodriguez, who's eight and two this year with a 3.20 ERA. He's coming off of a great start against the Phillies. He went seven innings, gave up seven hits and two earned runs. He hasn't given up more than two earned runs over any of his last three starts and hasn't given up any more than two earned runs in four out of his last five starts. He did have a little bit of a rough time back on the 28th of last month against Boston. He gave up four earned runs over six innings. So even that, not really a disaster. He's looked very, very good, and recently, guys, the Orioles' bullpen has looked fantastic. They're tied for first in the majors with a 3.13 bullpen ERA, so absolutely killing it. The Orioles' pitching staff is looking very, very good right now, and man, the bats are looking even better, guys. They've scored 17, 7, 2, 8, and 6 runs, respectively, over their last five games. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. We see Gunnar Henderson killing it. Like, up and down the roster, this this offense is just lethal guys they're first in the majors in slugging percentage they've been first in slugging percentage all season long they are third in runs scored they're batting at nearly 250 as a team that's been holding steady all year long like this is just a a roster loaded with talent they are going to hit the crap out of the ball it seems like pretty much every night pretty much regardless of who they're going up against so Orioles looking great right now they're taking on the Houston Astros who've managed to win three out of their last four but when those wins are coming against the White Sox and the Tigers not exactly going to throw you a parade for that guys they're 30 35 and 40 on the year. They're eight games back in the AL West. They're handing the ball in this game to Jake Bloss. He's looked very good in the minor leagues this season. Not, not going to lie about that. He has looked very, very good this year. I mean, he's made 12 starts in between high triple A or high single A and double A this season. I mean, he's looked good in the minors. Don't get me wrong, but man, just getting run up there to face big league arms. That seems like a bit of a tough look, especially for a guy who turns 23 years old on Sunday. So yeah, they are throwing a baby out there, kind of throwing him to the wolves to go up against the Baltimore Orioles. That seems like a pretty tough look. I guess he has the slight advantage of the Orioles not really knowing, uh, you know, what to expect from him. Definitely not a guy they're going to have taken at bats against. And uh, we'll see how deep he goes into the game. I think the Astros bullpen is going to be key in this one. They're 18th in the majors with a 4.12 bullpen ERA. So honestly, their bullpen kind of trending in a positive direction. I mean, maybe not amazing. We have some questions about this offense too. I mean, they scored five. Four zero and four runs respectively over their last few games. So not hitting a uh, not hitting the ball incredibly well. And this has kind of been the story of this team all season. They put up really good counting stats except for runs scored. They just don't get that many runs across the plate, guys. They're 14th in majors in runs scored and first in the majors in team batting average. So you know just just some question marks about this offense. What are they going to actually be able to do out there against a very very solid Orioles? pitching staff. Looking at the numbers of this game, we see the Orioles at minus 143. The Astros at plus 138. We've got an over-under of eight and a half in this game. Baltimore, we can't help but notice, guys, they are an MLB best on the road. They are 24 and 11 on the road. We also see they are an MLB best to the over. Are we interested in the over-under in this game? Well, I don't, I don't think we can be necessarily. I don't expect Houston to score a lot of runs and 
do we really expect the Orioles to score double-digit runs two games in a row? That seems like a bit of a big ass. They are going up against a rookie pitcher, though, so I could see it. We see also that Houston is a big under team. So that, that scares us off of that over-under, but guys, not going to scare us off of taking the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, the Orioles minus 143 seems like a pretty reasonable spot to me, but if you wanted to take the Orioles uh, minus one and a half, you can get them at plus 105. Plus 105 going up against a rookie for the Baltimore Orioles, that is all right with me, especially since they've been such a good rookie team so give me the Orioles minus one and a half in this game we're getting greedy I think they're going to win this one walking away against an exciting rookie pitcher but this is no Skeen style outing I think he's going to have a hard time against one of the best hitting teams in the major leagues next on the docket guys we got the Washington Nationals going on the road to take on the Colorado Rockies the Nationals come into this game fresh off of a tough loss there in the last game of their series against the Diamondbacks they lost that series two games to one but they are 36 and 38 on the year which for this team not a terrible uh, you know, set of results. They're handing the ball in this one to DJ Hers. He is one and one this season with a 3.77 ERA coming off of a dazzling performance against the Miami Marlins. He went six innings, gave only a single hit and struck out 13 in that game. Dominant, dominant stuff from him. He's looked very good in his last two starts. I mean, his season debut back on the fourth of this month against the Mets didn't go amazing, but his last two outings have looked very, very good. So definitely positive things coming from him. Washington has to be pretty excited from what, what they're seeing from this young guy. And in general, they have to be pretty excited what they're seeing from their bullpen too, guys. 11th in the majors with a 3.83 bullpen ERA. They will definitely take that. The question for this team is, are they going to score runs? They've scored two, three, and zero runs in their series against the Arizona. Arizona Diamondbacks not exactly the best pitching team so a little bit a little bit scary there they're gonna have to produce some offense I mean they're 24th in the majors and run scored 27th in the majors and slugging percentage so seems pretty unlikely that offense is gonna come via the long ball definitely some big question marks about this team at the plate they're taking on the Colorado Rockies who are 26 and 49 this season coming off of a five to three loss to the Dodgers they did manage to win one out of four games in that series so I guess they'll take that this isn't a team going anywhere fast this season they're handing the ball in this one to Dakota Hudson he's two and nine this year they 4.89 ERA coming off of a mediocre start there against the Pirates. He went five and a third innings, gave seven hits and three earned runs. His start for that at Minnesota was much better. And you can kind of see it's a lot looking at his numbers. It's a lot more fun to pitch on the road when you are a Rockies pitcher. Coors Field. Yeah, it's the most hitter friendly park in the majors has been for infinite time. The Rockies bullpen, obviously not great. Pitching at Coors Field is pretty tough. No shocker there. This offense, guys, it's been pretty, uh, pretty hit or miss this year. No pun intended. I mean, they are nine ninth in the majors batting 250 as a team but they're only 16th in the majors run scored and that's coming uh with half your games being at Coors Field seems not great to me they're 18th in the majors and on base percentage just not uh not a lineup loaded with a bunch of great hitters so looking at the numbers of this game we see the Nationals at minus 115 we see the Rockies at plus 104 we've got an over under of 11 in this game Washington is 19 and 19 on the road. Colorado is a bit under 500 at home. We see some mixed over under trends in this game. I honestly think this might be a reasonable spot to take under 11, even at Coors Field. I know taking unders at Coors Field seems kind of insane. So this isn't going to be making it into the pin comment. I also think taking the Nationals minus 115 on the road it doesn't feel great, but I do like DJ Hers out there on the mound. Like he's been throwing the ball well. So it's kind of a pick your own poison situation. You're forcing me to make a bet on this game. I guess I'll take under 11. You're forcing me to bet aside. I guess I'll take the Nationals, but in general, this is a stay away spot for me. Next on the docket, guys, we got the Milwaukee Brewers going on the road to take on the San Diego Padres. These two teams are playing right now with the Brewers down three to six there in the top of the eighth inning. So that one is not looking too hot. The Brewers are going to be handing the ball in game two of the series to Colin Ray. He is six and two this year with a 3.29 ERA. He's having a great time out there as a starter. He's also had a pretty good time as a reliever. Last time out, he went six innings, gave up two earned runs on four hits to the Cincinnati Reds in a game we saw the Brewers win five to four. The Brewers are four and one over. Over his last five appearances the only loss in there was at the Phillies so obviously that's a pretty tough loss to take I mean you know it's the Phillies they're pretty freaking good in general the Milwaukee bullpen hasn't been terrible this year guys at all I mean they're currently top 10 in the majors ninth and in fact with a 3.67 ERA so nothing nothing no problems for me with this bullpen pretty solid stuff there and the hitters they're not having the best time lately guys I mean they scored three runs in their current game they scored only two and six runs respectively in their games before that they were both wins but still you you expect this squad to be putting up a little bit better offensive numbers than that. I mean, they're seventh in the in the league in runs scored, eighth in the majors batting 252 as a squad. They're fourth in the majors with a 328 on base percentage. Like 
this is a team that should be putting up more runs than they are right now. And will they be able to do that here against the Padres? Well, we'll have to see, guys. They are going up against the Padres, who uh, look like they're going to get the win in Game 1 of this series. They're handing the ball to Dylan Cease here in Game 2. He's 6-6 six and six this year with a 3.95 ERA, coming off of getting absolutely obliterated there at the New York Mets. He went 3-2 and two thirds innings, gave up 7 earned runs. His start before that was very good against Oakland, but in his three starts before that, he all of them, he had some issues against the, the Angels, the Royals, and the Yankees. Not exactly the easiest, you know, three teams to face. But in general, we don't love what we saw from him recently. The Padres' bullpen also has not been among the best in the majors. I mean, 17th overall with a 4.05 bullpen ERA is not great. I guess it's not a disaster, but when this offense has been looking the way it's been looking, that is not going to get the job done. I mean, they're 10th in the majors in runs scored, 2nd in the majors in batting average, 7th in the majors in on-base percentage. But over the last few games, guys, they have scored, looks like they're going to score 6 in this one. Five in the game before that, but three, two, six in a game they lost 11 to six. Like, just not swinging the hottest bats right now. Do I expect them to get back on track? I don't really know, guys. Who can figure out the Padres? They have been all over the place this season. Not a team that I like very much. And looking at the numbers for this game, guys, we see the Brewers at plus 132, the Padres at minus 150. I don't know why Cease is getting so much respect here in this matchup. I mean, obviously Milwaukee is not looking good for us there in game one of this series, but I think there's a solid chance they bounce back in game two. They're 22, looks like it's going to be 22 and 19 on the road, so not terrible on the road. The Padres are going to be 19 and 20 at home, not dominant at home. I'm not that scared of Dar Dylan Cease. I'm not that scared of the Padres' bullpen. The Brewers should have the better starter in this game and the better bullpen. They should have the better bats. We'll see what they actually end up putting up out there, but give me the Brewers plus 132 in this game. Seems like a very very reasonable price. Is this going in the pinned comment? We'll have to see. I mean, it feels like a pretty good spot to me, but they're obviously not looking good in game one of this series. So we'll just have to wait and see. It's got a shot to be in the pinned comment. Next up, guys, we have the Minnesota Twins going on the road to take on the Oakland A's. We saw the Twins take the 7-6 extra inning loss there against the Rays in their last game of that series. They're 41 and 34 in the year, handing the ball to Chris Paddock. He's five and three this season with a 5.25 ERA. Thanks in a significant portion to getting shelled by the Oakland A's back on the 16th. He only lasted two and a third innings, gave up five earned runs and two home runs in that outing. Start before that was very good against Colorado, but start before that he got shelled by the Yankees. Not exactly a guy we feel like we can trust a whole bunch. The Twins' bullpen in general, guys, is not exactly a bullpen that we feel like we can trust either. 21st in the majors with a 4.22 bullpen ERA. Definitely a problem there. This offense, they've scored six, th two, six, and eight runs, respectively. They were on quite the hot hitting streak, but when your hot hitting streak is coming against the A's and the Colorado Rockies, Definitely going to start asking a few questions about how legitimately good of a hitting team this squad is. They're 7th in the majors in slugging percentage, 10th in the majors in runs scored, but they're going up against, uh, you know, they're going up against the A's again. We'll see how they can do. They dominated them in that series. They won all four games in that series, you know, the series before they faced the Rays. So we'll see what they can do. Paddock obviously did not have a good time the last time he faced them. Does that mean he's doomed to have another bad outing? I don't necessarily think so. The A's come into this game. They won two out of three against the Royals. They're only 28 and 49 in the year but they're handing the ball in this one to Joey Estes, who's 2-2 two two this season with a 5.97 ERA. He got shelled his last time out at Minnesota, just got absolutely dominated in that game. Two and, two, two and two thirds innings, eight hits, six earned runs, gave up two home runs in that game. He's given up two home runs in each of his last two starts, so I think it's safe to say that he is struggling out there right now. I mean, in general, the A's bullpen's kind of been struggling all season long, 22nd in the majors with a 4.28 bullpen ERA, so not great there. Obviously, not one of the better hitting teams, although they did score, I mean, they scored 7-5 and two runs there in their series against the Royals, but they're 28th in the majors in runs scored this season, batting 222 as a team overall. Not exactly an offense that I am super scared of. And looking at the numbers of this game, we see the Twins at minus 160, the A's at plus 148. We got an over-under of eight in this game. The Twins are 18-18 and 18 on the road. Oakland is 17-21 and 21 at home. I'm leaning towards the Twins minus 106 in this game. I also think over eight could be very reasonable. Both these pitchers got shelled their last time facing these opposing offenses. So if you're forcing me to make a play in this one, despite both teams showing trends towards the under, I think over eight is a pretty reasonable play in this game. Will it go in the pinned comment? No, it will not. Last but not least, guys, we've got the battle for LA. We've got the Los Angeles Angels going on the road, kind of, to take on the Los Angeles Dodgers. The Angels come to this game fresh off of losing two out of three to the Milwaukee Brewers. They're 29 and 45 on the year, not having a good time. Handing the ball to Patrick Sandoval, who's two and eight this season with a 5.24 ERA. He, uh, his last time out, gave up eight hits and three earned runs over five innings at the San Francisco Giants. The Angels have won in each of his last three starts, but not exactly a murderer's row of opponents there. And yeah, Sandoval, not exactly somebody we can trust. He's given up three 
three, five, and one earned run respectively over his last three starts. So he's had his issues this season. No shocker there. The Angels bullpen has been one of the worst in the majors. A 4.79 bullpen ERA is pretty terrible. This offense can put up some numbers occasionally, but they've scored zero, three, five, and six runs respectively over their last four games. Not a ton of guys they're running up there that I'm scared of. I mean, they're 21st in the majors in runs scored, 17th in the majors in batting average, batting 239 as a team. Just not an offense that I'm pumped about. Mike Trout seems like he's not going to be back anytime soon. And why would he hurry back for this team? They're taking on the Dodgers, who are playing really well right now. They've won four out of their last five. They won two out of three, or three out of four there against the Rockies. They're 47-30 and 30 on the season. Handing the ball in this one to Landon Knack. He's 1-1 one one this year with a 2.61 ERA. He's making his fifth start of the season. He has yet to give up more than two earned runs in any of those starts. He hasn't gone super deep into these games. I mean, his last time out against Cincinnati, he went four and two-thirds innings, gave it three hits and a single earned run. But he's looking pretty solid out there, and he gets to take on the Angels. Not exactly the scariest offense offensive team. The Dodgers bullpen in general, guys, has been pretty good all year long. They've been clearly a top five bullpen in the majors, so not a lot of question marks about that. Also, not a ton of question marks about this offense. I thought they would take more of a hit with Mookie Betts being out, but they've scored five, six, 11, nine, and three runs respectively over their last five games. No problems there. Otani hitting the ball extremely well. Like just in general, this team's looking really good. We saw Kershaw uh, look very good in his rehab start, so they might even be getting a little bit of a you know a little bit of boost there in the starting pitching department. So looking at the numbers for this game, guys, you see the Angels at plus 166, the Dodgers at minus 190. We've got an over under of eight and a half in this game, guys. No shocker here. I think the Dodgers are in a pretty good spot to get the win in this game. Obviously, to make it worth it, you're going to need to uh, going to need to take them minus one and a half because taking them minus 190 not very appealing you take a minus one and a half you can get them at plus 114 that seems like a pretty good price guys we're going to be on the dodgers minus one and a half in this one will it end up in the pin comment you'll just have to wait and see i don't think it's a lock to go in there but plus uh plus 114 is pretty enticing and knack has looked really good out there so yeah give me the dodgers for sure that's all the games we have for today, guys. Hit that like button for good luck on all of your bets and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Let me know in the comments any questions you have on today's slate. Thanks for watching. You can click the link in the description to check out StumpTheSpread.com and we'll see you guys tomorrow for more sports betting action.